Uh, you can always check your version number right there, right there on that screen in the first box there. You can change your uh, pilot, your fuel. Today, FS Economy will, will be managing my fuel. You can change your uh, AC and your O2 oxygen. I'm going to get rid of reflections because I'm not a fan of reflections right now. Oxygen sound will leave on. G1000 here. Uh, you have some options for VR. Disable bezels for all G1000's pop-out windows. I wonder if that would be the uh, the best option. M9 Aviation is going to help us, but he isn't on a call right now. He works for Real Sim Gear. Let's turn on the. Uh, well, you guys are, already have it on. You can see the camera here for the G1000. So we'll be rocking that today. I, I might play with that option to to disable bezels. I might just play with that option. Like we should try it right, right now. Enable rain effects is here. Um, keep instrument pop-ups inside screen. I don't think that should be on either. Here's the sound volumes. And here's the about. And the credit page. It's awesome. The option, that option replaces the, the bezel file that we use for other aircraft. Ah, so I shouldn't do that maybe? That's what I need? Ah, okay. Perfect. All right. Well, let's do that then. Let's disable. All right. So let's disable bezel. And then, and then, right? Disable bezel. And then, and then take off, keep instruments, right? I think that's what we want. Let's turn on the plane and find out. So here we go. We're going to come down here. I need to zoom out just a little bit here. There's there's that. We're going to go control uh, five and control one for right now. Not sure on the bottom option. I can't remember on checking that. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll play around with it. Uh, master on. Oh, that's the engine master. Here we go. Electrical master on. And let's go uh, AV master on for a moment. And let's uh, see if we can detach here. No, it's not letting me detach right now. I think there's a trick to this one here. Oh, we can change the frequency by hovering now. There we go. So I have to click on the uh, CDI. Click spot is near center top. All right, I clicked on um, right in the middle of that compass, and it, it seems to work there, yeah. All right, let me uh, make this a window. We'll bring this down, and then we're going to maximize it. How cool is that? It just works. Otherwise, you have to resize it. So let's just test here the transponder button. I'll zoom in on the screen. Yep, transponder button's working. That's my that's my go-to test. ESA, yeah, right? DA62. Oh yeah. Uh, I also have a checklist for it, but we'll just we'll just get her going here. Pilot Edge is going to open up in uh, 18 minutes. Turn some masters on. Turn a fuel pump on. Raise that arm up here. Cross feeds. Block that off for now. I'll turn the AV master off for, for the moment. Right, that's looking good. Alternators are on. Good. Okay, now AV Master can come on. The AV Master may be able to stay on. It's good to see you, Isa. 
Uh, I seen an arrival at Mustang. If donuts are gone and your desk chair is broken, it wasn't me. It's been a while since we've back been uh, been back to the old headquarters, Saint Wolfric. <laughs> All right, so let's zoom back in on here in here and create our flight plan. So I'm gonna, as you can see uh, up here in the upper webcam, I'm gonna hit the FPL button, and that brings up the. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for you guys to see this here. So that'll be that position. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, so now I'm in the flight plan mode. And I'm rotating I'm rotating this knob. Our first waypoint will be Tato. So I'm going to rotate the knob to Tato. T-A-Y-T-O. So we're going to... I just love this, the, the feel of this knob. It's just the it feels like the real G1000. It really does. Okay, Tato. Uh, after Tato, we're gonna join Victor 23. So I'm gonna go to Tato. Your GUI 242. Yeah, it's a really nice plane. Yep. And then uh, under Tato, we're gonna hit uh, menu, and we're gonna rotate. Oh, it doesn't have load airway from Tato. You, th I would have thought it would have. Would have uh, I would have thought that it it would, it would have Victor twenty three, but Wolfie twenty six seventy one. Wolfie twenty. You know awesome what? streams, John. Thanks for everything, bud. Good times, fun times. Wolfie twenty six seventy one. Thank you for the uh, subscribe and the continued support. You're, uh, you're, uh, it's great to have you here. I just re looked at my camera and my camera is crooked. I gotta re we got a subscribe. That's a little bit better, but thanks for the subscribe. I think I'm still crooked. All right, we'll deal with it for now. Good morning, Scotty P. I almost saw you in... Uh I almost saw you in Phoenix the other day, didn't I? Uh, I'm going to change this waypoint to Barrow or Barra and see if maybe we have Victor 23 from there instead. So uh, Bravo, Echo, India, Romeo, Alpha... Again, rotating here, as you can see in the upper camera. Hello, upper camera. Uh, Barra. All right, let's change that. Boom. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna delete this waypoint. Yes. Hit OK. Now I'm gonna try to join Victor Airway. So I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna highlight Barra, and I'm gonna click on Menu. Load Airway. Why doesn't? Why isn't Victor 23 there? Hmm. Well, after Barra, let's go RBL. Okay, Red Bluff. And then after Red Bluff, is there an airway between 85 and Barra or after Barra? Yeah, RBL will be, we'll check that. So I'll go Menu. There we go, we finally got it. So Victor 23, perfect. I'm gonna exit Victor 23 at Sacramento. So we're gonna uh, fold down here. I guess some waypoints, even some waypoints, even though they're on the Victor Airway, are not. Uh, they don't have the airway listed as a connector. Okay, no problem. Where's Sacramento? Is it at the top? Man, maybe Sacramento's not an exit point either. I found you have to have both the entry and at least one waypoint on the airway in order to add the airway. Ah, okay. I know that that ride along would have been a lot of fun, Scotty. And I would have bought I would have bought you a nice cup of coffee and some pancakes too. <laughs> Install a little trim on the camera, exactly. 
the G1000 panel you have that you have does it have its own it, yeah it's 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 a it's a basically a screen using an HDMI cable from my video card yep a complete unit just plug and play um, I wouldn't call it plug and play you've got to add configuration files um, you've got to <clears throat> resize the screen sometimes you got to change the bezel graphic you got to plug in you know as far as the and then you have to install the uh, plug-in but it's not too difficult not too difficult at all. All right. Apparently, I can't exit Victor Twenty Three at SAC. But the weird part is, is Victor Twenty Three ends. This particular Victor Twenty Three ends at SAC. That's really interesting. We got Capto Epoff. Hmm. Oh, it already has an exit listed as. It already has an exit listed as. Tato, so load airway. Victor twenty three. We're gonna go south. So there's Talem. That's going north. Interesting. Just trying to find battleground. Working on a new installer that will handle 95% of all that. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, I just don't want to say that you know someone can just plug it in and it works because you you know you have to re drag the screen down. You got to plug ins. You got to do a little bit of configuration, but pretty easy. I can't find my waypoint. That's very interesting. I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make uh, I'm going to get rid of Barra. So we'll clear that out. And then I'm going to load an airway. Yeah, okay. I'll just wait to that. So after RBL, I'm going to go to gongs. G O N G S Let's see if we can do an airway there. There we go. Load airway. Victor 23. I still don't understand why SAC is not listed. But we'll do it the old fashioned way. So I'll go back to flight plan. After gongs, we're just going to go to uh, grid. So golf, Romeo. This would be a lot slower using the computer, I think. G R I D D. Yep. Grid. Lady Flyer has flown the DA62 for 20 hours. In the real world, eh? Nice, nice. Yep, that's a real. This is the real Sim Gear product. Yep. And then one more waypoint before destination. We're going to put in uh, Sacramento, B O R. And then, yep, not in South Korea. And then destination, which is to Charlie, Lima. Right there. Old Snack Air Headquarters. All right, we're going to now click on Flight Plan to get back. Yeah, we're fine there. Okay. Now we're going to click on the bottom. As you can see along the, uh, you have the, the, the keys, the soft keys, hard keys, whatever you call them. Hit Transponder, and we're going to go VFR right now because we can't. We're going to take off VFR, and then we'll get a uh, 
we'll get a clearance in the air. I'm going to go up to uh, 5,000 feet, so I'm going to rotate the altitude select knob. Now, I heard a rumor that if you click on this now, you get this screen. I think that's a new part of the update, so you can type, type in 5,000 there and then close it, and I think that gets you. Although, that went, let's, let's try it, 6,000. Oh, there's the negative positive. That's cool. How do you get it to take the 6,000? Do you hit enter? Yes, enter. Okay. We're going to go at 5,000. Hit enter. Thank you, Wolfie. It's a pleasure having uh, Lady Flyer and Issa here in the chat. They're, uh, I met them through Iron Condor Simulations stream. It's pretty cool. All right, we're burning fuel. I know, but... We're having fun regardless. Sync up the heading bug. And uh, there's the parking brake. We don't need the auxiliary fuel pump. We can turn on the uh, pitot heat. And also, we can go flaps for takeoff. All right, let's taxi out. Uh, wind here is negligible, so it's our so it's our choice for runway. It's a pleasure having you in the stream here today. Of course, thank you. Glad to be here. Fem fem fatalis. There you go. Now you guys are you guys provide uh, some some good entertainment over there in the Iron Condor Simulations uh, stream. I'll, oh, X Enviro is doing a little wig out up there, as you can see in the clouds. A little bit of. Haven't seen that before. I also updated to uh, X Pen 11.35 Beta 2. So if you uh, are out there beta testing 11.35, there is a new update as of this morning, I believe, or late last night. What airway are you trying to get to SAC on? Victor 23. I'm trying to exit, but Victor, but but SAC is the last waypoint on Victor 23. So the comic relief, exactly. Yeah. Well, credits to Isa, not me. I just follow her. Yeah. In fact, there's two Isas over there, and Lady Flyer. It's like Iron Condor has the the ratio of men to women on Iron Condor's stream is skewed um, but it's a pleasure to have you guys here today coast pilot how you doing what you say what did b2 show up is he here what are you saying does the six uh, the da62 update require 11 point no I, I think you could run the da62 on an anything that's uh, that's released yeah no I, it doesn't require oh you you are you're uh, you're okay is isabella and isabel ah i thought there was another i thought there was another isa so but do you guys both go by isa sometimes isabella isabel i'm gonna have to try to remember that lady flyer has the a at the end <laughs> You're thinking about picking up this plane with my org store with reward points. Would you? Re this is one of the best uh, twins out on the market. Uh, it's and it's also on FS Economy, the Jalone. So highly recommend it, and it works with my G1000 Real Sim Gear panel. So um, yeah, anyone that's considering updating X Plane to the new beta, I always recommend that you back up your previous version. You don't have to back up all your ortho photo or even your airports directory. You are now logged on. Just back up your um, just back up your everything else into a into an off, you know, like a USB drive or a different hard drive or something. What's new on 11.35? Uh, they've got a lot of scenery, uh, New York uh, landmarks, Washington landmarks, bunch of new airports. Um, they've got um, some bug fixes, and they have 
new new objects for airport designers like boats. B2 is most likely being currently dressed and fed by his team of underlined. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm watching I'm watching the market today and it's really in my favor except I'm playing this l Have you guys heard of Lululemon? I had not heard of Lululemon before a few days ago and they're ha they have an earnings tomorrow. So I'm I'm doing a little earnings options play on Lululemon, but I had never heard of them. Apparently they're pretty big. Yeah, smoke fan. Uh it's the ultimate mod team that's making the max and it's it's freeware. I've gone broke buying Lululemon for the wife. Is it is it pricey stuff? Ah, okay. All right, let me turn the sound up for departure. Just a little bit of sound for departure. Here we go. Hollow Edge opens up in one minute. Here we go. There's not much room for error. Enjoy your oh. We got a subscribe. We, we got, got a subscribe. Okay, noise canceling headphones coming on. If you just click on those headphones, boom. We now have noise canceling headphones. Oops. Thank you for the subscribe. Lady Flyer with the subscribe. Very much appreciate the support. Okay, got to turn that down a little bit. All right, we're just going to make a left turn here. We're still hand flying the bird. Flaps are clean, gears up. Let's do a little flyby here. Thank you for the subscribe. A tier three subscribe. Holy snack lips. We got a tier three subscribe. Uh Warisa. Yeah, Isa, that's my nickname. It was an accidental it was an accidental mispronunciation of subscri subscription or subscribe. I said one day I said subcrab. And then some people are like, Are you saying subcrab? No, I'm saying subscribe. And now it's a thing. It's, it's it has just stuck. And what what really makes me giggle sometimes is when my three year old is jumping up on the up and down on the couch, and he says, "We got a subscribe! Oh, we got a subscribe! Holy snack lips! Holy, holy snack lips! Woo! Look at that!" Whoa, making it rain. We got a sub crab. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> I'm going to turn on, I'm going to celebrate that with, a, with an autopilot here. Let's see, position light strobes. <laughs> Hit the autopilot button. Autopilot, uh, heading mode, sync up to heading. Thank you. Flight level change. We'll climb out at uh, 130, 150. <laughs> we got a subscribe. Actually, we'll climb out at, uh, I take it back, we'll climb out at 125. There we go. We got a subscribe. I need to try to find the uh, Invisi sticks. We got a subscribe. So many subscribes. 
we got so many, we gotta we gotta say hello to all these new uh these new these new folks here. Thank Lady Flower gifting twenty subs. Uh we've got um Melt Cobber, we've got Ryan eighty three B, uh we've got uh, Marvin the Robot seventy seven, P P Woodsy, the Jalone, uh A Arizona Aviator, good to see you, Arizona. Uh by Jokesy, August forty one. Fergus Conal, Max Salisbury, Wolfpack Nation, uh, Narrow Matrix, McKay AJ1, Poly, Pobali CWM, Warisa 92, Pet Cavi 16, Dutt Rudder, I like that name, Dutt Rudder, Johnny Karcher, Sandro 3322, and Scorpio Ron. Wow, thank you very much. Make sure that you say thank you to Lady Flyer. That is awesome. Wow. Uh, I was lurking and boom, I'm a sub now. Right, August? <laughs> Hello, Hoke Mania. Or Hotch Mania. I learned it. Uh, one of the things that you learn at uh, FS Expo is how to properly say people's names sometimes. So it's ho ho Hotch Mania. I call them Hoke Mania, but Hotch Mania. Look at that coming in. Boom. All right, we got, uh, we're coming up 4,800. You got, I, I'm going to have a shot of coffee for that. Woo. Cheers, Lady Flyer. John may not have to Uber and Lyft drive tomorrow as a result of Lady Flyer. We can do more flying. <laughs> the other thing that I'm going to announce here today, and it may not be of interest, but my boyfriend, my my boy my boyfriend my daughter's boyfriend my daughter's boyfriend my both my daughter and her her boyfriend will be on the stream uh later this uh today and they're going to be playing a game online so we have that coming up as well all right we've leveled off at uh, 5000 i'm also going to change my barrel which is now 2988 so we're going to make a little bit of a change there cuz i was way off on that one How do you say that? Oh, crap. No. No, 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 no. No. Oh, no, I got so excited. Guess what, boys and girls? Boys and girls, we have an engine fire. So I got to shut down the one engine. Ah. One engine shutting down. I don't know. I don't think we have any extinguishers on here. Let's turn that bad that 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 bad boy off. To pay attention exactly. I was so over torquing it. But yeah, we now have it. We now have an engine fire. Uh it's it's it, it's a beautiful thing though that we have um Oh man, that's bad. I think I shut off the wrong engine. That's really bizarre. I did. I shut off the wrong engine. <laughs> there we go. Wow, is it is it reversed? That engine is still going. Oh no, nope. both of them have gone. Oh, snack. <laughs> All right, let's cl quickly go to the computer and plan this out. All right, if we hit the if we hit the uh, FMC just right. If we hit the FMC just right. We're at 5000. All right, yeah, there we go. We're good now. Okay, we programmed the FMC, we're back. 
these things are so ne- so advanced, right? Puck Vanek. <laughs> Puck Vanek. It's so nice. Isn't it nice that we've actually had been face to face in in the real world, not the blue pill, red pill world or whatever. John Fez is here. D Money's is here. Fergus Canal is here. Deja vu. Exactly. Dogs. Hello. Yeah, it was to- it was so fun. All right, I got an oil temperature light. Why do I have an oil temperature light? Hmm. Hmm. Coolant temperature. If we go if we go down here and we look over this way, we got oil temperature, oil pressure, coolant temperature, fuel te- yeah, so this one's a little bit out of whack on the right. I want that must be because of the fire. <laughs> All right, we're good now. <laughs> Hello, John Fezza. Need to meet John Fezza one day. He goes to Cosford, so if you ever want to meet John Fezza, I, I believe he's he'll show up at Cosford from time to time. All right, we need to. So what I did is I did a direct to to uh, Red uh, uh, RBL, which is Red Bluff. So we're going Red Bluff, and we'll continue on Victor Twenty Three to Grid, and then Sacramento, and then we'll go on to destination. Oh, look at that. The fire's out. How did that happen? Hmm. wonder how that happened. It was all those sub man. That engine got excited. And sh- Last day in Paris before heading back home. Uh, dogs, I have a question. Tell me, tell me a little story about the train ride. Tell me uh, just a little bit something about the train ride over to Paris. Did you actually go underneath the British, the channel? Did you go in the channel? Does the train go in the channel? Is or, or is that just cars and trucks, or or where? Or did you take the train on the other side? Tell me a little bit about that train ride. The Euro Tunnel. Does that actually have a train going through it? Because I know about the channel, right? Or is it called the Euro Tunnel? So the trains do go. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Uh, you went into the channel. It was awesome. See, I, I've got to do that someday. And maybe maybe even one day they'll have high-speed internet in there. Or maybe they do, and I can, I can live stream it. <laughs> Only trains go there. Uh, I... Th- thought that cars and trucks also go in there but i could oh okay collects all cars and trucks have to go on the train that makes sense because you wouldn't want uh you wouldn't want an accident so it's kind of like that um when i'm in switzerland and i'm going to um when i'm going to zermatt it seems like there was a i had to we had to put our car on a train because you couldn't drive in a certain area, if I recall correctly. Yeah. They built a road tunnel as well? All right. I need to resize my pilot edge. Uh, or, sorry, the Project Fly Banner a little bit here. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit overwhelming. That might be a little bit better, right? You got the left fuel pump on and the right. Oh, yeah, I turned the fuel pump on. Um, thank you, John. Yeah, because I thought the fire was over there because it, it labeled fire here. And I should have realized that that doesn't necessarily mean it's on the left side. <laughs> You're scared of uh, tunnels, especially those with 400 meter water above them. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, 400 meters, what is that like? Um, is that like 1,200 feet? That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I hear you. All right, let's just make sure our temps are all good. Doing 166. I could probably make the engines go a little bit faster. So, Puck, uh, if you're if you're here, Puck Vanek, chime up. I have a quick question for you. 
Um, any chance you could come on the Discord and 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 talk to us about the the ride home? I I, I didn't get a chance to tune into any stream debrief or anything. Cool. That would be so cool if you could pop over to the maybe to the voice channel. We can go to the private room maybe. If you can, if you can't, that's no no problem. You might be. Uh, it, even, I don't know. Got to grab a coffee. I hear you. Sweet. I want to hear about, for those that don't know, Puck Vanek uh, has a real-world uh, Bonanza, and he flew the Bonanza from up in the North Dakota, somewhere Minneapolis area, down to Orlando, Florida. A long flight in a Bonanza. Well, you don't necessarily have to... Uh, you don't necessarily have to download Discord. You can actually use the web-based app, but you can download it on their website. I would just go to... Uh, what I think I have a URL now, discord.gg slash johnfly. Discord.gg forward slash johnfly. I think will take you to the, a point where you can join the server and do all that good stuff. Puck lives in the nether regions of the north. It has no name, yeah. I've been through the region of the north. It has no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. I can't remember. Lady, Fire, Lady Flyer will be right back. All right, you're in the voice lobby. Perfect. All right, let's bring Puck Vanek into the private office. All right, I'm not sure if this is working. Is this working? Hello, hello. Hello, now i got to check my volumes. It's always an audio game. How are you, Puck? Oh, always. Um, I'm sick, so Expo got me sick. But... You... Oh, man, I hope I'm not sick. Because we, <laughs> we, sh... we were, everyone was hugging and sharing drinks and cocktails and everything. You know what? It sounded like um, uh, Keith was a little under the weather last night when he was controlling, but I, that may have been something else. Yeah, and I, uh, I just checked in with um, Jack. And uh, he's he's sick as well. He's got pretty much exactly what I got. So lovely, did, lovely did, times. Did you guys did you guys at, use the VR headset by chance? No, I didn't. I was going to because okay. I've, I've actually never used a VR headset. OK, so I was uh, I was going to go over and try it and I just didn't get around to it. Yeah, because that got us sick at uh, FS Con up in um uh, Connecticut. We anyone, who, a lot of people who tried the VR headset got a really, really bad cold, and it was hmm. it was super bad because yeah, you know, there's yeah. variations of cold, but that sucks, man. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's all right. Took some Dayquil. Mm. I'll power through. <laughs> I was gonna blame it on uh, on commercial a commercial airline flight because sometimes when people fly commercially, yep. you know, the circulated air, they get sick. But you didn't fly commercial. I can't blame it on anybody but myself. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yeah. just adjust that volume just a little bit. There we go. Uh, so yeah, tell tell what tell what time did you leave uh, and when did you leave? Um, so we woke up at about uh, about five thirty on Monday. Um, our plan was to try to leave at around six o'clock, but we wanted to. We of course wanted to say bye to. Brad M. But, oh, wait a second. Brad decides that he's going to leave right at 6, right as we're walking out the door, so he gets in an Uber, and he's at MCO by the time that we um, get out to our car. So <laughs> we were like, thanks, Brad. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, he uh, that was kind of funny. But, um, no, we uh, we left at about 6 o'clock. We um, went and got some coffee at Wawa because, of course, you got to get Wawa when, you're, when, you, when you can. So, yeah. I should have um, done that. I've never had it before. I should have. I should have. It, it is the bomb. It, it's fantastic. They had this. Uh, they had this coffee. It was like a. It was like a mint mocha sort of thing. Like mm -hmm. it was so good. Um, mm. It it literally tasted like, um, like if you had hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. But it, I mean, it was a cold drink. But if you had hot chocolate and you put a little bit of peppermint in, it was so good. Wow. I 
I got to try it. I I mean, I see I hear all these people talking about it and I've never I've never even seen one in the wild, so No, they're it's fantastic. They don't and have them in your neck of the woods though, right? No, no. Okay. The the furthest north I've seen it is like Well, it's a, it's an east coast thing. Yeah. So it's all up the east yeah. coast. Okay. Um So yeah, we uh we so we rented our car through a new company. Um, they're not a new company, but it's like we didn't rent it through uh, through like Hertz or mm-hmm. National or whatever because we found out that the young driver fee for both Christian and I was going to be like three hundred bucks under twenty five or days. whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was going to be incredibly. It was going to be almost more expensive than the actual car rental for those four days. So I remember like, well, those days. Just, yep. It's, it's stupid. So, um, <clears throat> so we found this, uh, this company where it actually allows people to rent out their cars. Toro. Yeah. Toro. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, so we tried that and, uh, there were, there were only two cars on the two cars available. Mm-hmm. There was a Nissan Altima mm-hmm. and there was a BMW. <laughs> so which one did you think we went there for? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we went for the BMW. We were only shown up by Nico who had the BMW convertible. So I, that he, was kind of funny. That is kind of funny. He, he, uh, he let me have a ride in that over to the, uh, Ritz Carlton. Oh and, yeah. And, uh, let's put it this way. If you're in the back seat, the, and the, and the tops down, you're right in the blast zone of the oh, wind. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> impossible. It's impossible with those. <laughs> so I, just to side, side note, I, I have a, uh, I have a car that its lease is ending uh, this week, and mm-hmm. I was half tempted to go ahead and purchase the vehicle for what's left over, you know, the residual. Sure. Just to put it on Toro. But, it really is not a bad idea. But then it's... I realized people drive car, rental cars. They really are hard on them. Yep. So I'd well, have I mean, to take the chance of... You know, because the idea would be that okay, over time it would make the payment, it would offset the insurance, it would, and I'd own the car after the after the loan. Mm-hmm. But what kind of car do I have left over after it's been rented out? Because it's the right. typical attitude: oh, it's a rental. Just it's the same thing with aircraft. There are there are some pilots that will treat an airplane differently when it's a rental versus their own. Exactly, <laughs> and and that's the that's the cool thing about Toro is um so we were talking we talked with the guy a little bit while he was waiting on his wife to arrive um with their second car so he could get picked up mm-hmm. so we were talking with him and we're like so how does this work like if we were to go and do that um because there are no there's nothing like that up in North Dakota so I mean mm. if we drive an hour somewhere and we can rent it for a week or two weeks or whatever mm-hmm. um, that'd be fantastic mm. so we were talking with him and he said my the insurance only or my insurance only covers the car when i have it in my possession otherwise it's all on the renter's insurance so it's on um, your on your policy yeah, then? yeah oh. it's on our policy so christian was the one that rented the car out like that's his deal i do the flying he does the driving sort yeah, of deal so yeah he he went and rented the car and he was actually he had to pick up renter's insurance for those 4 days that we had it oh wow um and as we were doing the walk around the car, there were no like visible like damage to the actual paint or the body itself. It's yeah. just like the rims were just completely destroyed. Ooh, and so we were talking document that. Yep. Yep. We were talking with the guy and he was like, yeah, so I didn't pay a single cent for that. Cause I know I didn't do that. Like that was purely what somebody did while they had the car. So they paid for it out of pocket. Mm. I was like, that's not a bad thing. Cause I mean, you don't need new rims if they're scuffed up. Like, so he had to prove insurance to Toro or to the owner. Um. Wait, what do you mean? Like, if someone just claimed they had insurance. Oh yeah, no, we had to we had to prove with like our actual policy. Okay, because like, that uh, we had to and to the owner, to not not to Toro, but to the owner, or to no to, to Toro to as Toro. Well. Okay, so it's all yeah, it's all handled in the app. Okay, okay. Which is, it's crazy. It, like, it was so cool. You could post pictures to the app. Um, if you had any questions, you message Toro or the or the owner. Yeah. Stuff I, like that. I, yeah, I had a car actually listed, and I actually put on the calendar, I said it would be available these days, and it was like a week out, and then I chickened out. <laughs> but it was a different car. <laughs> 
and, and I chickened out. I like the idea of it, but then I think I, I really do think that they're gonna, you know, and and the other thing that worried me is rental cars in so many cities are so cheap. Why does someone yeah. go to Toro? It and, and and now you've pointed out to me, okay, that under twenty five situation, but does the rental insurance that he had to take out equal the under twenty five? Probably not. Yes, because um, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what I'm trying to remember what company he's with. Uh, it's it's like a new company that's mm. like all online based. Oh, shoot, what was it called? It it whatever it is, it's super 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 cheap. Mm. Uh, I think his I think his payment is like under eighty a month. Okay, okay for insurance. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Dudu Alex, yeah, this is Puck Vanek talking to me. Jameson uh, Door, yes, Jameson was in the back seat with me. Or were you in the front seat? I think you were in the front seat, Jameson. I can trying to remember. Maybe you were in the back. One of us, one of us going over there, had to sit in the middle of that convertible and had Oof. to sit on the ashtray. Beamers are not very good for that. Yeah, because <laughs> there were five of us in the car, but. Um, Anyway, the dirts. Hello, how are you? Only Boeing. I'm flying the ERJ, climbing 5,200 feet per minute and still gaining airspeed. I have I I uh, a few people told me to get that plane, and then a few people have told me don't bother. I, I'm kind of on the fence about that, but uh, I thought I the, would be on the fence too. Yeah, I thought the original idea was being able to rent cool cars that Hertz, Enterprise, etc. Don't rent at a better rate. Yeah, I think. Well, obviously, Puck Vanek and, obviously, and Christian yeah. got a BMW. Um, I mean, somebody somebody yeah. did rent out a Ferrari, actually, on that app, like a week before we like we were looking at it and we were like, OK, we got to make a decision. Yeah. And we were like, do we want to go for the Ferrari and pay forty dollars more per day or do we just go? Can you imagine BMW? pulling up to the pulling up to the in a Ferrari? I I think I think that would be a showstopper. Right. You'd there. have to, you, <laughs> you know, ha, eh. You know, pull up the Ferrari up to the Seven Eleven as Bish is eating the Twinkie. I mean, it would be just like an epic stream. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, Voldy, it was it was an additional forty dollars, so it would have been eighty, uh, like eighty five or something per day. No. But I think we would have had to take out a higher insurance policy or renter insurance policy if we would have done that. So it would have just brought the cost up, anyways. No. Yeah. Forty dollars a day for the Ferrari. Yeah, just for the experience one day. I mean, to be, I just did Uber and Lyft, and I, I probably yeah. spent, be, and the crazy thing is, I spent two days trying to get home, so I had, uh, an, <laughs> an, I had an inflated amount of Uber and Lyft rides, and I always price compare, and Lyft, Lyft seems to always beat Uber, but there was one moment where Uber didn't, uh, or had a lower price, but uh, yeah, I, I just find it, you know, unless it's Vegas, where I can get a really cheap rental car, and I, if I don't, if I'm not bringing golf clubs, or or other things, it's just so easy for me personally to do Uber and Lyft now. So, sure. But uh, I can see how in some situations you need a car, and Toro uh, is going to be an option for me. I, um, Especially in some cities where like there's a convention and the rate for Hertz and Alamo and National and, and wh whoever, uh, Avis, it's all in artificially inflated. All right, so you get to the airport. You get your you got your Wawa. You get to the airport. You got to make sure you go to the bathroom before you go airborne, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yep, that Af was uh, after that the was Wawa. Key. That what, was very key. Weather was looking okay uh, on Monday morning. Weather was. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Um, all the way through, uh, Florida and Georgia, weather was fine. Like we just we were skirting right past the edge of some cells. Mm -hmm. um, we we originally planned we were gonna go to we were gonna try to get to Louisville, mm -hmm. um, and then that didn't end up working out. So we were like, okay, well, or we were looking at it and we were like, okay, this is kind of close to our endurance. If we have to do any um, maneuvering around storms, I don't want to I don't want to have to jeopardize or I don't want to have to go down to the um, max cruise or mm. sorry max um, economy cruise because that slows us down and mm -hmm. we already had a headwind. So we we're like, let's just go to Knoxville, Tennessee. It's a kind of, it's a very cool airport to to fly into, and I mean, we didn't get to see any of them, the mountains around the uh, airport because it's mm -hmm. in a valley. Is that a Charlie? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, cool. and it, they were they were incredibly friendly. Um, they 
they do mostly regional stuff, but mm-hmm. I I believe I saw an Allegiant uh, 319 there, which was kind of neat. Um, but yeah, they were they were just one after another of regional. Uh, Piedmont, PSA, Air Wisconsin actually. Isn't that into fun? That. Just taxiing around them, being it's around cool. those planes. It's cool. uh, I, I just recently on Facebook, I had a, a memory. Uh, that with uh, Gibbs and and Max, uh, we, we're in his 22 at JFK, and literally on the parallel taxiway is a super Etihad 380. Isn't that isn't and, that crazy? And Max or Josh pulled out his BlackBerry of all things and was oh, just God, made God. made a quick a quick video, and I'll never forget that oh. moment where we're looking at a super caution wake turbulence on the taxiway, you know. But it's fun when you go to those small ones and you see those 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 commercial airliners just and, and they see you and everything. It's pretty cool. So what? Just off topic, just for a second, what is hundred low let going for right now? <laughs> Depends where. Like in Knoxville. Hundred. Hundred low let in Knoxville. I think I think my because I bought uh, I bought over forty gallons. I believe it was. It would have been originally if I would have bought under sixty. Or under forty, it mm-hmm. would have been six ten. Wow! Because I bought forty, it was five fifty. So it's based on quant. You get discount on quantity. That's interesting. It depends. Yeah, yeah. it depends on where you go. If yeah. I were, if it were somewhere in the Midwest, they wouldn't, they wouldn't do a bulk mm. um, price unless you bought like two thousand gallons or something mm. like that. But from, since we were down there, so from a financial standpoint, it flying down was ne- wasn't necessarily to save money. It was just to go have a journey as well as. Because pretty much, yeah. yeah because you're, well, it was it was about the same price. It was it wasn't, yeah. maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars more. But then you think about the the added benefit of it goes towards my flight training, and I got twenty five hours during this trip. That's huge. That is it's that huge. is huge. That's that, that's what I do in yeah. five months of training at UND. That's really cool. So, Did I miss a yeah, donation from Hotch Mania? I'm just seeing, I'm seeing on my screen I got an eight dollar donation from Hotchmania. Hotchmania, John, John, are you John. still here? I totally missed it. Thank you for the uh, and Puff MTD with the subscribe. I I think I missed that as well. I don't know how. I don't know how old. That's awesome. I I just got, <laughs> got distracted today with the engine fire. Thank he's still here. Oh, thank you. How how long ago was that? Like Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so you so you land in Knoxville, you fill up. Um, yep. How how did any stories from the the controllers along the way, even before Knoxville or after Knoxville? I mean, it, um, I think I think the most memorable one was uh, flying between, yeah, flying between um, Orlando and Knoxville. We uh, linked up with. Indy Center, mm-hmm. or sorry, Atlanta Center, mm-hmm. um, and they handed us off to one controller, Derek. Then, Derek, by chance? <laughs> I have no idea. But they they gave us to one controller. Yeah. Then twenty seconds later, another controller. Mm. Then a third controller. Another like forty seconds after that. Wow, I'm like, just guys, like, I, am like I flying through all of your sectors? Like <laughs> musical ATC chairs. Yeah, it was it was kind of funny. Um, and I was trying to, I, I kept trying to ask for deviations and they're like, oh, you'll ask for that on your whatever next frequency. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Wow. And so then they, they hand me off, ask for it on your next frequency, blah, 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 contact. But, but it, truth be told, you can deviate if you needed to without you, them. You get, yeah, you get about two miles. I was going to uh, say the airway, there. the airway is about that wide on either side. Yeah. So, yep. and, and the, and the truth is, is that if there's a safety concern, you're just going to come on and you, you'll just say, Hey, I deviated 15 left. I've been, and they'll probably be. Oh yeah. It, fine, and fine. we, the, the nice thing about what we were doing is we have, um, we had our, oh, well, we had my iPad. We also had the, the GTN and, Mm. We have ADSB on both of those, mm. which allows us to get weather, and so we can we can see these cells that are, whatever, fifteen, mm-hmm. sixteen miles out, mm-hmm. and we can see their trend, and so we'll we'll make estimated guesses because uh, we don't have. It's exactly I, what we did on the way down to Florida, because we yep, had the Nexrad and the four flight, and they and Josh and Max and I were all just like, okay, we think this cell, it that for the last fifteen minutes, it's been moving this way. We yep. think there's a little opening over here. 
it was amazing. And meanwhile, back then, everyone was tracking us on FlightAware, and there and there were some people like, "This is so cool," and then other people like, "You should not be flying in this." No, he was totally fine. We had the most no. beautiful scenic, be- beautiful clouds, and ATC was letting us do deviations, and it's they were nor it's normal in Florida for this to happen, right? Oh, absolutely, and so, that's I think yeah. that was the best learning experience was how calm all of these controllers were to mm. these storms and mm. how like they they just they understood they were like okay yeah deviate whatever deviations left of course up to 20 degrees 10 approved. left approved or your discretion yeah. up to yeah whatever yeah it was crazy yeah. so they um they were fantastic with all of that that's uh, cool oh they hot, really made as you say hotch mania said i wanted to toss you some money to buy the beer i never got to buy thank you uh, <laughs> you and hawkfish both offered to buy me a beer so, trust me, several others did as well, and I, I was quite tipsy because of all the generosity. So thank you very much, I, Lady Flyer. I don't know what an e toss is, but I, I guess you said later on it's naughty. So I guess I won't inquire too much further. Oh jeez, <laughs> spaceman. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So you you that that's very cool because it, it reminds me. It takes me back to that Florida flight for those those deviations and. I mean, if I was a controller and I'm sitting there and there's a, a little small GA plane just trying to dodge these big cells, I'm going to, whatever it takes, man. Yep. No, you're, that's exactly, that's no, what I thought was. You're good, Lady Flyer. In fact, a little sub, uh, subliminal innuendo can go a long way. <laughs> Especially if it's very subliminal. <laughs> anyway. All right. So, all right. Uh, so, so you're 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 taking off out of Knoxville. What, tell us about that part of that leg. Anything um, come to mind? So, taking off from Knoxville, the uh, well, here I'll go with the I'll go with the RNAV into Knoxville. Um, and by the way, this guy is talking about flying a, a real world Bonanza. We're not talking about some FS economy trip in X plane. Yeah, this yeah, is not the real that FS economy world stuff. Yeah. Um. So flying into so. Coming into Knoxville uh, Landing, um, we decide, or we were uh, four thousand feet, and um, those were about where the tops were, mm-hmm. and they were starting to grow and build. And mm. about ten miles out, at our twelve o'clock, there was a there was this huge towering cumulonimbus, and I asked, I was like, uh, just before we got our clearance, I was I asked approach like, uh, what is our or what is what are the tops for that? Mm. And they come back. They're like, uh, tops are showing at flight level five three zero. And I was like, whoa, because um, if you think about it, like the fifty three thousand, fifty three thousand wow. feet. Wow. And you usually you usually hear, oh, airliners or these big corporate jets. They always fly above storms, and that's not necessarily true. Mm. So I I thought that was that was like a big whoa moment, like looking at something that was. That will literally break my plane apart when I enter it. Wow! So that was it. it Was an eye-opening moment. Wow, Uh, Lady Um, Flyer, what uh, what aircraft do you fly? Just out of curiosity. (laughs) All right, so I've seen some of these. uh, I think Max flew four four one zero back home, and and I don't know if he was above stuff or not. But I I was like, wow, four one zero in a in a little biz jet. Um, and these, but you know, what's the service ceiling on the seven three or the or any of the Air Boeing's or Airbuses, it's we're talking high f- mid forties, probably. Uh, probably low forty. Low forties. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure what the seven three is, but I feel like it's a. Uh, I feel like it's a little lower than most. Yeah. Or is it forty? It might be. I I don't remember. Chat can tell us. Uh, Ground yeah. Point Niner, good to see you. Yeah, it was fun to chat with you. That was awesome. Thank you. Had an amazing quality on your streams too. Your your with your tripod. Amazing video and good audio. I was impressed. Uh, anyway, it so it was a pretty awesome stream. I'm I'm feeling all I'm I'm visualizing all of these stories you're telling me. And I almost came <laughs> down with you because you were so awesome you, to invite me a yeah. months ago. Uh, we were trying to get that to work out. One one day, one day we'll do one it. One day, yeah, there it is. But in, in, but uh, I'm gonna be selfish, right? I'm gonna be like, you know what? I want to go with you on you know somewhere, even if it's a small leg. I I just want to be right seat. I don't want to sit back. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll pick you up on uh, on our flight over to. Well, if we do fly to Vegas mm. <laughs> after this trip, we're kind of we're kind of uh, figuring out what we're gonna do. But um, it it'd be it. I tell you right now, 
uh, it'll be an interesting learning experience because of all of the uh, mountains, you know, here in yes. in Colorado and Utah, and you definitely have to come down like via Wyoming and then cut and then shoot down Salt Lake City in between the mountains. Yep. Um, it just so happens that uh, Rod, you know, Rod uh, Tataran, Art Tataran in, in Twitch chat. Yep. He's yep. he uh, he'll probably be flying through Salt Lake City as well for Ve- for Vegas potentially, and that's who I flew down with um, in his SR twenty two turbo. It was so fun, but he sold that nice. turbo. He got an Icon A five, and I think he has something else as well. But 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 flying with Max around Utah and Colorado, it was crazy. You know, fifteen thousand feet, oxygen, you know, mountain. Uh, what do they call that mountain uh the winds the t- mountain waves <laughs> it's, yep it's a whole new thing now i got to get oxygen yeah <laughs> yeah you got a little well it, there there's probably ways i mean if you you're young you could probably handle 10,000 oh yeah easily but yeah. for a while it's just anyway like, christian christian was not i i wanted to go up to 12 on no. the way back christian was like yeah there's no way we're going more than 10 and i was like fine Did we'll you- stay at 10 but yeah. uh you have pulse oximeters uh, i did i have i had one uh, with me mine yeah. mine didn't drop below like 91 ah. when we were at 10 oh no yeah no it's okay missing scenery <sighs> yeah i should have taken note of what that was i'll have to go watch my vod now <laughs> there you go it just it added water somewhere i should have taken note weird um okay but uh approach into knoxville uh flew it down to minimums um because the the clouds were pretty i mean it was broken like but it, min, was, min, it min? was minimums wow minimums. like i heard the minimums chime and then we broke out wow and um i had christian looking for the i had christian looking for the uh, runway and he was like yeah i didn't see it until until we broke out and i was like perfect Wow. So wrote that down in my logbook because uh, you have to go down to minimums in order to log it. So mm. cool. In, or, in my, order uh, to log an approach, if you're if you're yep. not under the under the not, uh, glare or yeah. the visors or whatever, the foggles. Yep, exactly. Because on the in those occasions, you have to go down to minimums, and then you can take them off and then land or do a missed approach if you ah, okay. don't have the runway in sight. I'm just starting my descent here out of five thousand for one thousand. Nice. Um, that's pretty cool. The, Were you, uh, uh, how many, I mean, you've done a bunch of minimums before. Yeah. So this, but was this kind of exciting? That one was probably the coolest one because when we broke out of minimums, you could see the mountains on either side. And it's like, if I didn't have the, if I didn't have the glass panel or mm-hmm. whatever on me, like that would have sucked <laughs> just yeah. to like oh, yeah. try to stay away from it. Oh yeah. Um, and I mean, approach was, approach was fantastic. They were very helpful and whatnot and uh tower was extremely nice was it sorry i missed the part where was it an ils or was it an rnav uh it was an rnav very cool yeah so we had a rnav minimum so 200 feet minimums um and we took off okay here i gotta back up here um so so we get on the ground um whatever i have them fuel up and uh they finish fueling up and i'm going to check the oil and whatnot Mm mm-hmm and I unlatch because the Bonanza has, uh, they have two pins that go down into little like, uh, they're like little teeth. Mm. And uh, there's that side, it's like a side lever that you pull and then you push out and okay. it'll release the teeth so that you can lift up the half of the engine cowl. Oh, okay. And when I did that, something happened where it broke off the pin, off of the bracket. Oh. And left so, or right side. I'm visualizing um, this pilot side, pilot, pilot side. side so okay. Side. And wow. it was the rear, it was the rear one. So at least it wasn't the front one. If it was the front one, that plane would have been completely unflyable. Wow. So what happened was we had to, um, duct tape since it. We couldn't uh, <laughs> kind of, can one of my mods of. give Messiah a permit, please? If there's mods around, please. Okay. Sorry. Go no, ahead. no, you're good. Um, so we kind of did have to duct tape it, but uh, I still have the little the little pin piece, and it just completely sheared it off. I I don't know what happened. It must have been vibration or something that just sheared it off. Completely. Wow. Um. So, whatever. I'm looking at this and I'm like, well, shoot, we can't 
we could probably fly. We can fly without it. Like it's not. Yeah. It's not necessarily a, a required piece to fly that aircraft. Yeah. It was just a little sketchy because, what happens if we take off? We get to mm-hmm. our high speed cruise, and all that air is coming into the cowl. It's trying to escape. Yeah. So I had to fly with the cowl flaps open, the entire time, just to let the, all the air dump out. Wow. And, and that's all the way. Then, that's all the way from 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 Knoxville. Yeah, from wow. Knoxville, and wow. then we were trying to get to Indianapolis because I had a. There's a repair, or I called American Bonanza Society, and they were like, "Yeah, we have a, we have a, a shop in Indianapolis. If you can make it to Indianapolis, like, you'll be good. <laughs> They'll be able to replace the bracket and whatever, and you'll be on your way in a few hours." Wow. So we were trying to make it to Indianapolis, and then while we were at cruise, I noticed that the um the cowl like i could see i could look up and see that there was just this big gap where the (laughs) cowl was flexing out i'm like well if we break if we break the other bracket yeah if we bend that so much that it snaps off yep um that thing is gonna fling fling open it could send us out of control and it could just completely snap off wow it could snap off and hit the tail and then we're sol so, uh, you could I mean, probably handle a little bit of damage, but not a lot. It, yeah, it, but that's a that's a big piece, and that if we're at a hundred and hundred twenty indicated, hundred forty. Yeah, oh, that's true. It, that was that thing's gonna snap off, and it's gonna hit, and it's gonna hit hard. It's gonna yeah, take a nice little chunk. So I figured it's probably safer and probably a little bit cheaper just to land. So we uh, we went to Louisville. There was a mechanic there. Um, that I called in the air and I was like, hey, we got this issue. What do you think? And he said, I've had this problem before on Bonanzas. Bring it in. We'll put some speed tape on. And <laughs> me being naive, I'm like, what the hell is speed tape? Yeah. And we get down to the ground or we get on the ground. We shut down. We start talking to the guy and he's like, all right, let me go grab the speed tape. <laughs> he goes in and he brings out this aluminum duct tape. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not putting duct tape on. It's going to ruin the paints. And he's like. No, you don't understand. You this don't. Stuff, I'm going to educate stuff, you. <laughs> he's like, this stuff is what every single airline uses. And I'm like, what do they use it for? Pulls up his phone, shows me a, um, a Gulfstream jet. You know how they have the, uh, the track. Um, how do I say that? The flap track like covers. Yep. Well, one of them had fallen off and they couldn't get the pins to realign. So he's like, you know what? Screw it. Let's put some speed tape on. Wrapped it. <laughs> two or three times of speed tape and like put it on. And he said that flew for 10 hours like that until they were able to get the pins in. I was like, seriously? So whatever, he put it on. We did our high speed run up. We did a few laps in the pattern and nothing didn't bow out. Didn't flex at all. It was actually when we landed in wow. Wisconsin, it was stronger. It, it was holding that cowl stronger than when we took off. I'm impressed. I was like, you're like, I, no, it's a paint job. I don't want none of this. <laughs> I don't really care. Honestly, we're I, that paint job is completely I, I like, up. So. I like your thoroughness that you, you know, you're not rushing to get home. You're like, let's go do some patterns. Let's make sure that this is going to work. I love mm-hmm. it because some people are get home itis and they may not be like, yep, we'll put the tape on. We'll go for it. But you're, you're, you take it one step further. Let's do some patterns. Yeah, I, let's test it. I like that. Cause then you have, a sense of comfort in the air. And I like that. Yep. Yeah. It's very cool. And, and that was the, that was the whole thing is, uh, I mean, if it were me, I would have just been like, okay, we're, we're going to go. But mm. as a commercial pilot, you're taught you, you don't care for yourself at that point because you know what you can handle, No. Yeah. but you don't know what your passengers can handle. Yeah. So that was my whole agenda was to make sure yeah. that Christian felt safe and whatnot. And so now, uh, we're back home. Yeah. We're good. Mindful. I, I don't know how yeah. much time. I don't know how much time you have, but I have the tire. The tire situation. Yeah, I, I, I got I got to hear this. I got. I, I have to hear this. Yeah, yeah. Spaceman has a good question. How much was the speed tape? Um, free. He <laughs> gave me the entire roll for free. Wow. The, the people in Louisville. Good. I'll have good you know people. the people at the FBO. Yeah. They were kind of. They were kind of jerks. Like I was not happy with them at all. But then once uh, once I called the guy and I was like, hey, where are you on the field? And he we, we went over and taxied over. He was the nicest guy I've ever seen. He was doing um, APU runs on a uh, Gulfstream one. 
Mm. So that was pretty neat. He was doing APU runs and whatever, and he was starting up the engines. And mm. so that was kind of neat. So we went up and got to sit in the cockpit for a little bit while, oh, wow. um, while we let the uh, engine cool down and whatnot so that we could put the speed tape on. And they were refueling at the time. So we were like, yeah, they were, the pilot of the plane was like, yeah, you can come up. And so Christian and I went up and sat in and watched. And uh, wow, I love I'm mad I didn't get a video. I'm mad I or did not Or even get a, a picture. Video. Yeah, seriously. A picture <laughs> would have been nice. I, I took so many pictures. Oh, we're turning at Sacramento VOR. I, I took so many pictures when I got to go up in the 737-700. Um, and I, I even had the, I mean, I even had a flight attendant write a, you know, I love snack air on a napkin and hold it up <laughs> while we're all That's hanging awesome. out in the cockpit. And of course I got That's to do, awesome. I got to do the captain's pre-flight overhead prep. That was fun too. That's sweet. On the ground. But, you know, I wasn't in the cockpit in the air. Yeah, no, of course. But, but I did learn that on say Delta, United, American, JetBlue, Southwest, if you have a buddy Who's a who's a captain or an FO, and they're doing a ferry flight? They can actually have you potentially have you come on board, yep, and be in the cockpit. Part ninety one, yeah. In a seven thirty seven, if it's not one twenty one, if it, yep. it, it in an A three twenty or seven three or whatever, you can actually go and hang out in the cockpit in flight. That would just blow my mind. Oh. That's the reason. That's the reason that some of these American carriers allow people to um, record in cockpit. Yeah, because uh, they're on fer- they're on ferry flights. They're on, yeah, yeah, it's a Part ninety one operation. Yeah, exactly. and and I recorded videos when I was uh, up in the you know right up in the in the cabin of the Challenger uh, three fifty that I, f- I was able to fly on up to uh, Bozeman from Salt Lake, mm-hmm. and that was so cool because yeah, it's just a different restriction, different you know, it's private jet so. Uh, you had a question here. Uh, how do you guys do SRA approaches? The Captain Beanie is asking. Sync rate, hello? Um, What's SRA? Good question. What's SRA again? Good, good question. I have to look that up. Yeah. Um, oh, approach or surveillance radar approach. So uh, air traffic control pretty much, it's not like a, it's not like an equipment that you have inside of your airplane. Mm-hmm. It's, completely done by approach so uh the only one that i know of it or i know of two there's bismarck and fargo have one Mm. um and what it pretty much is is it's like it's radar that goes out pings off of your aircraft and sends it back to this little box Mm. and it has like a vertical it has like a vertical track and it has the horizontal track okay and so they'll say um they won't tell you your, your tail number, but they'll give you an independent um, approach controller that you, you're you only talking to that controller, and that controller is only talking to you. Okay. And so they'll say, left of course. Mm. And you can either say correcting or whatever. You can just ignore it and just correct. Mm. Or they'll say, um, high glide path, and then you just correct. And they'll do it every once in a while based on how you're how – you're, tracking and whatnot mm, um okay. it's very it's very cool i've never done one i do plan on doing one soon but uh yeah so that's kind of how they do it very cool. they don't have very many there's there's maybe one or two in each state mm. jt kerr good morning uh what's the saying again if you can't fix it with speed tape then add more speed tape <laughs> yeah exactly forty dollars for a roll of speed tape on amazon he got it for free Ooh. Citation Max, good morning. We're we're just talking real world flying with Puck. <laughs> Hi Max. It's like a it's like a almost a PB and J, but it's just like a PJ. <laughs> Max, that's not even funny. It's just it's literally not funny. I don't even know what that is. That, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Slowing down. Uh, we're uh, four out here, landing at at, uh, at the uh, original Snack Air headquarters. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, Mustang. Two Charlie Lima 9. Someone actually created a, a scenery for us, believe it or not. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's a very small runway, so if you guys are going to predict the landing rate, it uh, be be very infl- inflate your numbers. Vegas Flyer is here. Very nice to meet you, Vegas Flyer. Uh, I'm almost 100% guaranteed that I'm going to see you next year in Vegas at the Expo. 100%. Yeah. 
All right, I'm gonna sync my heading bug. It's so cool, I click this button on the G1000, just like the real one, I just click it, boom, it syncs the heading bug. I go into heading mode. We'll have to hold off on story time for just a second here. Yeah, no problem. Um, I do I do want to answer a question. Uh, yeah. While they are called PAR approaches in the US, yes. Pretty much the same thing though. Okay, we're on a right downwind. I probably don't do enough CTAF calls in my life. I'm gonna get a little more wide here so our base can be a little more. But there's the Snack Air headquarters, old Snack Air headquarters. We, we moved them to Eugene. Um, but there's the old headquarters down there. Someone says there's Stell Donuts waiting for me. Let's see, in a diamond, what should my speed be on a right downwind? Ah, 127 is fine, right? <laughs> I can do t I can do flaps at 136, so we can even do a notch of flaps. Would you put your gear down right here midfield, or would you wait till you're turning base in a twin? Puck, you'll think about next year. There you go. <laughs> Oh, Puck steps away for a second. Oh, no, I'm back. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. A, I just had to make sure Dusk wasn't uh, sitting out on the balcony too long. Good old Dusk. All right, Good I'm going to put my gear down now. That's okay, right? I'm, I'm just, just on, the, uh, on the, the right downwind. Yeah, usually, usually a lot of people put their gear down before like um, midfield? midfield downwind. Okay, yeah. okay. That's good to know. Personally, you gear down on downwind. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then the other thing, too, is I wish these autopilots, would, you'd be able to change the bank angle like you can in the Boeings because it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not enough for this tight, tight base turn. But really, it should mean, be usually, off of autopilot. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll do a coordinated turn here into the pattern or into, into final, I mean. Wind is nothing. Huh. That's weird. Wind, X and Viral is showing no wind. Okay, get your predictions in now. And we're going to do another notch of flaps. This is such a tight runway. Brakes, undercarriage, mixture. Yeah, we're. there is really no mixture on a DA62, I don't think. Nope. It is all handled. Oh, you know, it's kind of funny is my fuel is not on. It's It's oh. been cross-feeding the whole time. That's what happens when you stream. <laughs> I agree. All right. and, and the thing is, I have my fuel pumps on. Should I have my auxiliary fuel pumps on as well, do you think? Uh, nope. Okay. Because wouldn't it be just engine-driven? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Ooh, this is going to be, this is going to be, this is going to be a clunker, I can tell already, just because it's a, such a small runway. It's like it's like I'm landing on a uh, balance beam in gymnastics right here. That's what I'm calling this. All right, trim it up, trim it up. It's good to see old Mustang again. Oh, L, the LOD is coming in. We're going to plant it down like a Southwest pilot. That was pretty good, actually. That was a greaser. That was pretty good. That's, I'm quite, I'm quite impressed with myself. Although it's funny that that here it said uh, Project Fly says 223, <laughs> but here this says 75. <laughs> you know, I have noticed that Project Fly is, it's delayed. So unless you have like the the top the top one the top refresh rate, yeah. it's delayed. So. I, I've been talking with Brad and a few people about that. And if it's like, whatever, if you're, whenever it refreshes, it'll give you like the most up to date. But if it doesn't refresh for a little bit, you're. It's so weird that, I mean, I'm, I met the guy who makes this landing rate plug in. I mean, it, it even said very good flare. So I'm like, it's funny, but only Boeing one. Cause we go off a of project fly. We probably shouldn't go off a of project fly. 
I should probably, <laughs> or I, or I should go off of both. You know, we have two winners. Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, I, I'm pretty happy with that that balance beam landing. All right, you got to get ready to tell us the tire story here in just Ooh, a moment. Yes. Let me uh, the tire story. Let me end the uh, the FSE flight up here. Snack Air headquarters actually looks like it's grown a little bit. It's gotten taller. I think that's because of X Plane Eleven Point Three Five that the building grew. And and the 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 vineyards over there look completely different. Something's out of whack here. This is not. This is not how I remember it. <laughs> We'll park here and then push back. All right, let's park. X and Viral was wigging out too. Oops. All right, parking brake is on. On replay, you can look at the descent, right? Yeah. First person to say Iron Condor wins 300 snacks. All right, last log. If I click on it, uh, 29, 39, 58 minute flight. 293 ground uh, crew fee, 2645 earnings, 1469 to snack air, 1176 to pilots. And D Money's got it. 